Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Little Bean and Me podcast channel. It's been a couple weeks since I have filmed, but welcome if you are a returning viewer and a very warm welcome to you if you're a new viewer. Uh, I hope you like what you see. So for those who follow me on social media, I'll be putting my social media down on the screen here for you. Uh, you know I went on a trip to Seattle this past weekend, which was very, very fun, a very, very much needed uh, time away from the children and from life and responsibility. Um, so it was a nice refresher, so I'm happy to share some of that with you later in the podcast. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of glad to be back. I'm sorry for the strange lighting. It's very odd, the lighting today. I mean, I could do this angle, but then you see the open door. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so um, welcome. It's been a bit of a quiet week, but I do have a couple of things to share with you that I didn't get to share with you last week and a little bit on a work in progress that I've been working on. Um, I don't have a shop update this week. I have not dyed anything. I have been extremely jet lagged, extremely uh, tired. So um, going there wasn't so bad. It was the coming back that was pretty bad. So there is that. I am very happy to be back. Make sure this is focusing right. And uh, yeah, so let's just get into everything. So I wanted to share some things that I've been f doing, some things that I've been working on, and some things that I uh, have finished. So the first thing I'm going to put a picture up here somewhere um, is of a pair of socks that I finished. I think I have a picture of one of the socks. Uh, I did bring these socks to Seattle with me, but I knit them out of a sock blank. So last week I had some questions, or the week before, about how sock blanks look like when they knit up, and I'm always happy to show you what they do look like, courtesy of my little sock machine here. So I did make a couple of pair of socks from that. I relaxed the yarn, caked it up, and knit myself a cozy pair of socks for the plane. So I was very excited to wear those and to bring those uh, to, to Seattle with me. So that's one. Uh, the second is kind of a half object. Uh, this sock I made out of one of my newer colorways called Abandoned Carnival. Uh, it's a pretty, it's a grayed out fluorescent colorway. So there's some fluorescent greens and pinks and purples in here, uh, but it has a nice gray overcast to it. I did this also on my sock machine. I'm getting much better uh, at using it. So I did a one by one hung hem cuff. Uh, this was done from the cuff cuff down. So I knit it this way. And then I knit about 37 rows for a leg or 40 rows for a leg, did my heel and then did my standard uh, 57 rows for the foot and then the remainder of the toe. So this is the colorway. And I'm hoping it's going to show well. It's always hard to tell in this little viewfinder. But I do have some of these left in the shop. I am having a sale. You can see there's daylight, there's the indoor light. It's, it's a very interesting balance we're striking here. Um, but this is still in the shop. I have one left uh, of this dye up. Here we go. And it's a really pretty color. Um, if you take a look at the shop site, there's better pictures of this color, and I apologize for not having great color accuracy today, but I'm very tired. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this is my half object. I do plan to make another sock with what is left from my little cake. It's nice and loosely wound up, so I have a nice uh, ball to draw from. It's not under too much tension. So I've just had this sitting here waiting to be worked up. So yeah, I'll probably be doing that this week and finishing up my other sock. This comes up, this is a nice uh, sized sock in terms of how far it comes up my leg. It comes up maybe mid-calf. So I'm very pleased with it. <laughs> the next thing that I've been working on, you probably have seen on Instagram. Uh, this is my Exploration Station shawl. I asked for a lot of good juju to try and make my yarn stretch, but I knew deep in my heart of hearts that it wasn't going to stretch. So I ran out of my lav colorway. Boo-hoo. Or as my brother likes to say, boho. Um, 
And so, oh, I have a crochet hook stuck in here. Eep. Okay. There it is. Okay, good. I finished on, I finished a row, so I don't have to take it out. So last time you saw this shawl was the end of the slipped stitch section, which is this section. And I have finished almost the entire nothing but knit section. It is, I'm down to the last two rows. Make sure I don't hit the microphone. Uh, I'm down to the last two rows. So these rows here are all, all alternating uh, Ron and Lav. And then these last two rows, two and a half rows here, have been just Ron. So what I have done is instead of going back and forth and knitting and then purling back like 400 stitches, I've just been breaking my yarn, whoops, breaking my yarn um, as I go and just knitting as the pattern indicates. And then when I have to go back, when I'm supposed to be just starting my second color, I break my yarn and then attach it anew at the front of the row. So it's coming along pretty nicely. I don't think it's going to be much of a noticeable difference. I don't think you can tell too much that we are using just Ron at the moment. But I do have about, I think, three more rows left to knit um, for this section. And then I start the final section. And I am like in awe at how huge this thing is um, and how quickly these last couple of sections have gone. So I felt um, I felt pretty accomplished. I didn't get too much knitting done on this except um, in the airport and on the plane just a little bit uh, here and there. We spent a little bit too much time not knitting <laughs> and just spending time together, which is a good thing. So um, this is my project. And so this has been my main focus aside from making this sock and finishing up my other pair of socks. Um, yeah, so not much knitting has gotten done. Apparently one of my neighbors thinks it's a great idea to start drilling outside while I'm doing this. It has been a very noisy afternoon. Or they're hedge trimming, vacuuming. I couldn't tell you what they were doing. So if you hear that sound in the background, I sincerely apologize. I don't know, I don't know why. I don't. Uh, I love my neighbors, <laughs> but I don't have any other time to film, so I just want to film. Um, okay, so the last, hopefully I can edit it out. Sometimes I'm able to like tweak it post-production and do a little noise cancellation, but I doubt I'm going to be able to cancel that noise out, so I apologize. Okay, so the last thing I want to share with you is the dyeing that I did last week. I'm going to check this. Hold on. No, no, no. I take it back. It's not my neighbor. It's my landlord doing the weed whacker during nap. Okay, just gonna leave that right there. Just gonna leave it right there. Just doing the weed whacker. So I wanted to show you guys the yarn that I dyed over the last couple of weeks, the things that are still in the shop. I do have a sale going on. Hopefully this gets up today, Friday. Um, but I have a sale going on through the end of the day today. I don't know, I don't think it'll be live tomorrow because I set the dates for the sale. I'm still kind of unclear on how all that works in the back end of Etsy. Like if the day I set to end is the day it actually ends or it's, so if I set it to end for Saturday. I don't know if it ends midnight on Friday. Who knows? I don't even know. Anyway, so I have some yarn that's still in the shop for my last round of dyeing, and as I shared before, I have one skein left of Abandoned Carnival, which is a really cool Halloween colorway um, that I dyed up with fluorescent purples and pinks and greens. Oh, blissful silence. He finally stopped. Um, and I have that in also a 150 gram skein. So here's my regular 100 gram skein and then this is 150 grams of my MCN base which is the Lux sock base. So this color is because it's hard to tell. Sorry for the focus issues too. I don't know what's going on with the camera. Um, this color is fluorescent. Wow I have a hangnail that's catching on everything. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave all this in because I don't even care. Um, it's fluorescent greens, pinks, purples, orange. The orange isn't fluorescent but it's very vibrant and it pretty much just has this really dark, not dark gray, but kind of a gray wash as an over, overcast, like a glaze almost. 
over the yarn. So it, it kind of mutes the colors a bit. It leaves them vibrant enough to tell what they are, but it doesn't completely block them out like if I had used black. So all the areas that are super gray were more white, and now they are this light gray color. So uh, again, I'm super sorry about the color. I don't know. I had to figure out a good way to film in this room because this genuinely is the quietest room in the house. Uh, but I still have yet to find a good way to film in here and get really good color accuracy. So, And then I have Luna. So Luna on Everyday Sock, which I think I only have one or two of these left. And then I also have it on the 150 gram skein. Like these are so huge. Like I just want to like cuddle with these all day. They are huge. So yeah, this is just Luna color, which is uh, a cool pink, a uh, blue-violet type color. It kind of shifts more blue, but it is a blue-violet, and a uh, warm yellow. Then I have the Abandoned Carnival colorway, not Abandoned Carnival, Classic Slasher, which is another Halloween colorway that I dyed up this year. It is a basic gray and black speckled and red speckled yarn. It is mostly a light gray. And I was kind of drawing on inspiration from like classic slasher movies where the, the real main focus was this really horrific fake blood. And I'm like, well, how can I translate that into yarn without making it just a whole red skein of red? So I was like, well, some of the cooler movies are like kind of dark and deep in their tone, like a lot of things are happening at night. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna pull in just some dark grays and blacks and the red. So I thought that would be kind of a fun, a more masculine color um, to put out for Halloween that wasn't just pinks and oranges and purples, which is what everybody has for Halloween. Uh, but I did do something really basic in classic fall, which I was very excited to do. So a couple of weeks ago, if you follow me on Instagram, which is where I post everything, um, if you're ever missing me here, please, please, please go follow me there because I am posting nearly every day there. I try to post at least one picture of a colorway or something that I'm doing um, so that you know where I am. Uh, but this is the Leaf Peepers Sock Blank. So this is kind of an autumn rainbow. So it goes from this dark red maroon into reds, oranges, into cool and warm yellow tones into lighter greens and darker greens. So it's kind of like the full spectrum of fall foliage. And I really wanted to capture that on a sock blank, which is really hard to capture on the screen, just FYI. Um, <laughs> and if I hold this still, maybe I can get a thumbnail. So, um, so yeah, I really wanted to capture the essence of fall in a sock blank. And like some of my most favorite parts are stuff like this where the two colors blend together and you get these deep speckles of each color, but they don't mix because of the way I dye it. So you get, you know, light areas, dark areas, and it makes for a very interesting knit. So when something like this is knit up, it's going to speckle within the color spectrum and gradually change from one color to the next to the next. So this one particularly, is just going from the dark red brown all the way to green. And I did dye up, which I have one, and I only have one or two left. I think I have one or two left that are two color transitions. So it goes from the red through the spectrum, or green through the spectrum to red through the spectrum to green. So it, it goes like it goes in so it does this transition twice in one sock blank and what that helps you do is to do two more matching socks and then I do have one double knit blank that is a single transition so you could knit two socks at the same time from the same blank and get two somewhat matching socks so um, I do have several of those still available I still have a few watermelons still available if you're keen to hang on to summer like some of us are but I am welcoming in the fall so if you are in the market for some new sock yarn or some cozy MCN or a sock blank um, definitely come by the shop today or tomorrow I don't know if the sale will still be going on tomorrow or if Etsy will cut it out before tomorrow um, so 
definitely come get it because I'm offering 20% off, which I don't normally do, but I am so tired <laughs> that I'm like, well, I don't really feel like dying this week, so let's just try and move out some of the stock so I can have a quiet social media, <laughs> a more quiet social media week, and just kind of chill and recuperate from my much needed vacation. So that is that. I have it back in its little sleeve. Isn't it so cute? I love rolling these up. It's like a little burrito, a little burrito of, of yarn. But this is probably one of my most favorite things that I've ever dyed. I just love it in every way. I love the fall. I love everything about this. So there's only a few left. So if you're really into it, definitely come grab it. Um, so yeah. <sighs> okay. So I don't really have much of anything else to share with you. I know this is painfully short, but I am going to chat a little about my vacation because I did go to visit my best knitting friend, Amber, with my best crochet friend, Heather. And we're all moms. We've all kind of, our kids have all grown up together and Amber just moved back out to Washington State with her husband and her two kids because he's in the military. So we planned this trip right when she moved so early summer June I think it was like the day she moved was the day we booked our flights so we're like we have to go we have to go and have a mom's weekend and the dads will have the kids and we'll just unplug for a little bit I mean obviously Amber has our kids but it's different when it's not your own kids so you have a little bit more uh flexibility leeway patience that whole thing when it's not your own so we flew out on Friday so I got up at three in the morning Went to Boston to the airport, flew out. It was a 7 a.m. flight, 7.15, and we flew all the way to Seattle, arrived at 10 a.m. Seattle time, got picked up at the airport, and then we just nonstop from there. We didn't nap. <laughs> we didn't rest. We were just hanging out with each other, joking, laughing, just having the best time, and having had the the summer that I've had with my emotions, my mood, depression, all of that, it was like this wave of just release and just happiness and feeling a little bit more like myself. And um, my husband said to me, he's like, oh, that makes me feel really sad because you say you felt like more like yourself when you were there. And I was like, no, it's just that I am around the kids all the time. I don't really have many outlets except maybe the podcast, chatting online with friends, and then whatever else I'm doing with my children. I very rarely am afforded the opportunity to go and hang out with friends or to spend time when we're not taking care of kids. So um, in it, when you're around other adults all the time, if you are a working mom, you know how valuable it is to have your time at work and to have time with people who are adults and not necessarily children uh, because your sense of humor changes, your demeanor changes, the way you carry yourself changes. So it was something that was definitely needed and I felt so refreshed being there, being with friends, laughing, joking, just having so much fun. So um, that was that. Uh, we went into Seattle on Saturday we rode in, we, we parked at the ferry station in Bremerton, and we rode the ferry in, which was really beautiful. I have only been on a ferry a couple of times, and um, even growing up, I grew up in Rhode Island, and um, <clears throat> I had never gone to Block Island, bad, bad me, um, <laughs> and I'd never been on a ferry. So I went on a ferry to, in Catalina, going to Catalina for a wedding in 2010, which was my first time ever kind of on a real boat, and on the water and going like a distance, you know, not just like in a canoe or a kayak or something like that. So uh, this was only my second time on a ferry in Seattle and it was a beautiful ride. Uh, we chatted with some other families that were there. We were just sitting in another family sat next to the three of us and we all got chatting about our kids. And then we went out as we were approaching Seattle and we took some really lovely selfies and photos. Like we kept pushing people out of the way like, oh, we're gonna take pictures. We're gonna be like tourists, even though Amber is technically not a tourist. So um, we took photos with each other we went and we had some lunch when we were there we did a lot of shopping I bought myself this t-shirt um, I will try and link this boutique below she does sell on Etsy uh, she was very nice I forget which one was there when we were there I feel like it was La Rue La Rue it's like ugly baby and La Rue I'll stand up let's stand up so this is the t-shirt 
Um, so she, the woman who is the illustrator for this was working the shop when we were there, but it was a little shop called Ugly Baby and La Rue, and I think it was Lauren is the artist. Um, she was very nice. Everything in the shop was cute. They had little felting kits, knitting kits, needlepoint, uh, t-shirts, stickers, just pretty much like all the artsiest artsy stuff you could ever want. Uh, so that was really fun. We went to Pike Place Market and we saw all the flowers, all the vendors uh, that were there. I bought some art from a local illustrator. He does like um, comic book style art, like kind of character stuff. And it was a photo, a uh, photo. It was a drawing of like Ghostbusters. So it was all the characters of Ghostbusters in like the city scene. So that was really nice. Then we went and we got tattoos. So I'll show you my tattoo. I don't have any others. This was my first one. So I will show it to you. So there it is, my little compass rose, which was really cool. So yeah, we got each got a compass rose tattoo um, for each other, kind of, um, because we're all now kind of a little bit divided. So like the symbolism behind it is that, you know, we can always find each other uh, when we need each other. And no matter how far apart we are, you know, in our hearts, we're always together and we're always there for each other. And we we're very close. So I was okay putting this on my body and I really liked the meaning behind it. And I really liked the design. It's very simple. It did not hurt that much. I know it looks crooked. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell <laughs> what it looks like there, but, um, and you, you can't really hold your arm like this because your skin turn like it turns. There it is. Um, so I really liked it. I thought the tattoo artist was very nice. He was very soothing, very calming. It did hurt. Uh, it felt a lot like just like a burning needle going down your arm pretty much. But it wasn't painful. It was more discomfort uh, and a bit of pain. Like the way that your nerves go in your arm when he was doing the central line of the tattoo for me that was the worst it was a long line going straight down and it it stimulates the nerve all the way down so I was feeling it in my hand and when he did like the bottom which is the south pole with like the bottom of the arrow it hurt a bit as well but it wasn't it wasn't as bad as childbirth. It wasn't as bad as you know having dental work done or something like that so um <laughs> So yeah, so we did that. We went and got some apps and drinks and then we went home to her house. She was fortunate enough to have a nanny for the whole day. So it was really a day of fun. We were there right from first thing in the morning around 11, 10, 11 o'clock until seven o'clock at night. So it was really, 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 really fun. And then we had the whole day Sunday. We took a red eye out. So like Sunday, we went for a drive around. We went to a local yarn shop that is about a half an hour away in Paul's, Paul's Bow. Paul's Bow. It's like Amy's art yarn, which was really cute. It was up in, in like kind of like an attic area. So you know how if you're ever down like a main street area, you have like the main street shops and then some shops, they're upstairs. So this shop was upstairs from the main street shops. And uh, it was really cute. She had a pretty extensive line of hand dyed yarns, fiber, um, fiber blends. So she cards up on a drum carter some blends and sells them. And then a ton of commercial yarn, all different kinds of yarn, all the way from, you know, acrylics, baby yarns, cottons, mohair, cashmere, silk, all like the whole entire gambit of yarn. So it was very, very nice <laughs> to go in there and see uh, some local flavor and also uh, some of the more familiar brands that I'm used to. I didn't get any yarn. I said I was probably going to get yarn, but I, I decided against it. I said, you know what? <clears throat> it was really nice to see this. None of the colors that were in her hand dyed yarn, blah, 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 hand dyed yarn line really spoke to me for a specific project. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to hold off. This is not going to be the last time I'm going to be here. And a lot of these other brands I can get through my local yarn shop. So that's that was ending up being my logic. Um, I did almost pick up some fiber when I was there, but I was like, you know what, I don't have time to spin. I still haven't gotten my spinning off the wheel uh, from my Targi top. So... <laughs> I probably shouldn't buy more fiber until I kind of clear off my wheel a little bit. So, um, so yeah, we took a red eye out of Seattle. 
Um, <clears throat> we got to the airport a bit early so Amber's kids could go to bed at a reasonable time, but our flight left around 11.30 at night and we arrived in Boston, um, Boston time 7.15. And I slept a little, a little, a little bit on the flight, but I have been fried ever since. And I think the problem was is that you get that little airplane cold when you fly, you know, you're in that circulated air, you get very dry, it's hard to recover. And then by the time we were starting to recover, we were already going back. So it's like, you know, it ended up being this strange timing of everything. <clears throat> So yeah, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so that was my trip to Seattle. It was super fun. Um, I'm so happy I did it. I don't regret it at all. I did miss my kids a lot. They did miss me a lot and I really missed my husband, but he was great and he took all of Monday off so I didn't have to just be on the ball with the kids all day. I could rest and relax, which I did nap on Monday. So, and I've been sleeping very heavily ever since and I think it's because I was so sleep deprived from that trip. But um, yeah, it was so fun. I was so happy to see Amber. I can't wait to go back. We're already starting to plan a girls weekend where we meet up somewhere like maybe Las Vegas to have some fun time with no kids, with just us, um, because we deserve it. Because we're cool. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so I don't have anything else. I don't have any acquisitions this week. I did purchase a couple of things for my spinning wheel. I wanted the double treadle attachment. I have a Babe uh, production. Uh, so I did order a double treadle transfer kit so I could put two treadles on my wheel instead of one because I do get knee pain from spinning. And then I also ordered her... Um, it's kind of like a woolly winder where it's an automatic bobbin winder. Uh, so she has... A bobbin that has slide hooks and she has this spiral like bobbin winder that goes on top and as you treadle in the flyer spins it automatically loads the yarn and you don't have to stop treadling so I'm interested to try that and see if it works it wasn't that expensive in terms of um, <clears throat> normal things that you would think of for a wheel, you know, that bobbins are super expensive or whatever. Uh, the Babe production line of wheel, like the Babe's Fiber Garden wheels, are generally not expensive. They're made of PVC pipe and uh, wheelchair wheels and fairly inexpensive parts, but they're pretty well crafted. So um, <clears throat> I didn't mind spending a little bit of money on that because I wanted to try it. Um, I didn't get any yarn. I didn't get any fiber <laughs> and I've just been running a sale because I'm like, let's empty these shelves. So I still have a fair amount of DK weight, uh, some fingering weight, several sock blanks left and that's about it. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this podcast. I know it's been a little while since I have filmed something. I think the last thing I filmed was my brioche tutorial and for those who have seen it, I hope you liked it. As always, if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you like it. Um, if you'd like to be subscribed, please feel free to hit the subscribe button down below. And if you want to get email notifications or push notifications to your phone, check the little bell icon and that will let you know anytime that I go live or anytime that I've uploaded a new video because YouTube is great about sending out those notifications. You have to make sure even though you're subscribed to click the bell, uh, which I find very irritating. To be frank, I don't like to have to click the bell for everything, but still love me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so far, everything else is good. Personally, you know, school has started. We're getting back into the routine of things, so I'm hoping to get everything back into routine with the podcast and dyeing and having regular shop updates. Again, I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, I am not doing any fiber festivals this year. I am going to Rhinebeck. Uh, if you are going to Rhinebeck, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd like to try and arrange a meetup with everyone or at least announce a time and place where I will be able to be on the hill for a meetup. I don't know uh, what the schedule is like <clears throat> for the fiber festival, but likely I will be at India Untangled on Friday night and then I will go to the yarn festival all day on Saturday and then Sunday maybe for a part of the day I do have a four hour plus drive um, to go to the festival so I don't want to be driving too late on Sunday to drive home I promised my husband that I would try to be home by supper so uh, we'll see about that but definitely look for me uh, Friday night and Saturday because I will be there 
I don't think I'm going to Needles Up. Uh, I don't know the time. I don't know if you need tickets to go to that or what. I haven't really looked into it. Um, but yeah. So I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your weekend. I hope you get a lot of downtime, a lot of rest, and get a lot of knitting done for this nice chilly fall that hopefully we have that we can, you know, wear all our hand knit socks and our shawls and stuff like that. <laughs> or hand crocheted items. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to share at the moment. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, have a wonderful weekend and I will see you in my next video. Bye!